This video is kindly brought to you by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence. and welcome back to Rosary Apparel. As you may know, I'm currently living in Japan for six months and I recently found out about this ancient Japanese craft called Tataki Zome. I think that's how you pronounce it, which is basically the art of dyeing fabric with fresh flowers. And as soon as I found out about it, I just had to give it a go. It's also super convenient because I'm currently living in Sapporo and there is a massive flower festival going on at the moment in celebration of summertime. So I decided to head down to the flower festival, pick out a selection of beautiful fresh flowers and I am just so excited to get crafty in my tatami room today and have a go at dyeing some fabric with flowers. I just don't think there's ever been a craft so up my street before. I am so, so excited to give it a try. First things first, let's go back in time a few days to when I visited the beautiful flower festival. Part of the festival was this section of plant stalls where there were so many flowers to pick from. I decided to pick up some mostly yellow and orange toned flowers as I'm hoping the bright petals will take nicely to the fabric. This festival was honestly one of the cutest things I've ever seen. I was so happy to have a reason to buy some of the flowers and support the local growers. The whole thing just made me feel like I was literally living in Stardew Valley. I also ended up visiting a local florist and picked up a variety of different stems as well as this is all very much an experiment and I think it will be good to have as many different flowers to test as possible to see which are best suited to a project like this. All of these flowers cost me less than $60 AUD by the way, which is such a bargain. There is no way I would be able to buy even close to this amount of flowers in Australia for the same price. <laughs> So I have done a little bit of research and it's best to use natural fibers for this project. So I've got just some plain white cotton fabric here that I picked up from a fabric shop the other day. Hopefully it will work okay because it is best practice for doing something like this to actually pre-treat your fabric before you get started. And you can pre-treat your fabric using a product called Alum, which is short for aluminum sulfate. And I don't know if it's because of the language barrier, but I, have been to the grocery store, craft stores, even health food shops, and I cannot find this alum product anywhere. So unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to pre-treat my fabric first, but I did find this product here, which is basically just a color fixing agent. So this is something I can add to my fabric after I finished dyeing it to hopefully fix the color into the fabric so that it won't come out in the wash. This is all definitely very much an experiment though. So I think I'm going to start by doing a little test sample to see how it goes. Um, and that way I can get a little bit of practice in. I can actually add this to the little sample as well so we can see if it actually works. And then if it does, fingers crossed, I can actually get started on my actual piece of fabric. So for this project, you'll need your cotton or natural fiber fabric a hammer, some masking or washi tape, a chopping block or board of some kind to be able to hammer onto, and the flowers you'd like to work with. I'll have a link to a helpful flower dyeing guide below that goes into detail about what types of flowers are best suited to a project like this. So now to actually start pressing the flowers onto the fabric. Using my scrap piece of fabric, I started by picking some of the petals and rearranging them onto the fabric. I then folded the fabric piece in half and then began to pound the petals with my hammer. As you pound the petals, the dye will begin to press into the fibers of the fabric. I 
then kept repeating this process for all the different flowers I purchased in order to see which ones will work best. Okay, so far, so not so good. <laughs> um, it is a lot harder than it looks. Also, I've realized some of the flowers I have just don't work as well as others. So this flower here are these, which I was really excited about. I thought they'd make a really cool pattern, but <laughs> they just turn into a massive splodge, which is fine. I just won't use those. Um, I also found that like picking the petals off and pressing just the petals creates a much more defined flower shape. Um, so I think I'm going to stick to doing that. The only other thing is it is just so damn noisy because of the hammer. <laughs> I didn't think you'd have to press that hard, but it's literally just constant hammering, which when you're living in a small apartment in Sapporo you don't really want to disturb your neighbors <laughs> there's building work going on outside so it's noisy already but I just feel too bad to make this much noise so yeah I didn't really take that into consideration either I might go to the park and get crafty at the park instead yeah not sure <laughs> In the end, I decided to move my flowers and supplies outside onto the balcony where it was already pretty noisy thanks to the construction work. And before I get started on my next sample piece, let's just take a quick break to talk about the sponsor of this video. This video has been very kindly sponsored by Squarespace, the all-in-one platform to create a beautiful online presence and launch your passion project. Whether you'd like to start making and selling your own products, create a beautiful portfolio to showcase your work, write a blog or simply create any website of any kind you can design and create your dream website all by yourself with Squarespace you simply select from their range of beautifully designed templates and you can change up the template as much or as little as you like you can add everything you need to run your business successfully with just a few clicks no background or knowledge needed in coding whatsoever. On Squarespace, everything looks so professional and so beautifully designed. And it really did help to elevate the Rosary Apparel brand when I was first starting out. It really made me feel like my brand was actually legitimate and therefore gave me the confidence to be really proud of what I was creating and actually share it with the world. So if you'd like to create a website of your own, then head to squarespace.com using the link in the description below and take advantage of their free trial so you can test out just how easy it is to use for yourself and then when you're ready to launch your beautiful new website head to squarespace.com slash rosary apparel for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain thank you so much Squarespace for sponsoring this video so I then got started on a new sample piece and this time I found that hammering directly onto the concrete with a towel underneath made the hammering noise way softer than before and actually worked really well to press the flowers into the fabric. The brighter orange and red petals worked so well for this project. It was seriously so exciting to see the dyes take to the fabric so well. It was actually pretty interesting to see what flowers worked and which ones didn't work at all. After this practice sample, I really felt like I got the hang of the pounding technique, which actually surprisingly did take quite a while to figure out exactly how to do. For me, I found hammering slowly with a medium pounding gave the best results. 
Okay, so outside works so much better, I think, um, and having the towel underneath works really well as well to reduce the noise. But here is a little sample. Um, so this is on the cotton, and I also did a little tester on some rayon fabric I had just to see if maybe the rayon takes to the dye a little bit better. Some flowers work a lot better than others. Um, so these were the bright orange flowers. They worked so well and I think they're my favorite because they kind of create this really beautiful burnt orange color, which is my favorite color. This one here is also a favorite. Um, this is the red flowers. They actually kind of create more of a brown print, which I think is really lovely as well. And these are the really cute little yellow flowers. And I'm so pleased they work out nicely because I bought a whole heap of them because they are my favorite flowers that I found at the flower festival. I also did a marigold leaf print. And then these ones here are the orange and brown combo flowers, which work pretty well. They're not definitely not as crisp and clear as these two here, but I do love the two-toned print that these flowers give and then the carnations the petals must retain too much water because they just look so faded instantly so now for the moment of truth to see whether i can fix these dyes to the fabric i start by adding the fixing agent to a pot of warm water I then add the sample pieces to the pot and as an extra measure, I also iron these pieces to heat set the dyes to the fabric as well. I then let the sample pieces sit in the fixing agent solution for a good half an hour. But once the pieces had dried, I was in for a pretty heartbreaking result. They have faded so much. I can't even tell which side is the side I pressed on. Um, it might have been this side actually. So yeah, the best fix solution that I used doesn't work for this type of dye, I suppose, um, which is a real shame, but I think I'm just gonna get on with my actual fabric now and I'll just not pre-treat it or anything and use it for something that I'm not going to need to wash a lot. Like I think I might make a wall hanging or something, um, but I'm just really keen to give it a go and hopefully the pressed flowers without being mixed up in the best fix solution will stay nice and bright. So a little defeated by the result of the sample pieces, I decided to get pounding away anyway, as even though I won't be able to make anything that will need to be washed, hopefully the results will still be stunning and I'll be able to make something decorative instead from the fabric. Or at the very least, I'll get enough practice in to be a pro at fabric pounding when I give this project another go in the future. This time I decided to actually start taping the petals in place, which did result in a really nice crisp imprint. Without the tape, they did move slightly, creating a more fuzzy outline, if that makes sense. I just kept adding the different petal types that gave the most successful prints and tried to position them in such a way that gave a nicely spread out pattern onto the fabric. The repetitive hammering was actually really meditating and each time I removed the taped on petals to reveal the print, 
I couldn't quite believe how well this technique works. This project was honestly as much fun and as satisfying as I hoped it was going to be. Sitting out on the balcony on a beautiful summer's afternoon surrounded by flowers was honestly a peak crafting moment for me and this is for sure going to be a craft that I'll be trying again at some stage soon, hopefully next time with some properly pre-treated fabric. had so much fun working on this fabric. It was just so fun to work on something that is so different to sewing, but still in the sewing realm. And obviously I just adore flowers and to be able to create this little memory sheet of fabric of some flowers that I found at the cutest little flower festival in Sapporo. It's just the funnest thing ever. The best thing about using flowers that I got from the flower festival is they're flowers that are meant to be grown in a garden. And I have already used all of the flowers from those little pots, but already there are buds popping out. That means there are more flowers going to be grown. So I can keep adding to this piece of fabric until all the flowers have been used up and until we leave, basically. I am so sad that the dye fix solution didn't work out properly and I'm so keen to give this project another try when I've actually got the correct pre-treating ingredients needed to make the fabric able to be washable. I think for this piece, I'm just going to make something that won't need to be washed, like a wall hanging or maybe even like a cushion cover or something cute. But yeah, it was just really fun to experiment um, and try something I've never done before. So yeah, even though it hasn't worked out perfectly, I had so much fun and I've learnt so much that I will do differently next time when I try this dyeing method. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, it would really mean a lot to me if you could give it a like and stay tuned for potentially part two where I actually give this dyeing process a try properly with pre-treated fabric so that I can potentially make an item of clothing out of my hand dyed fabric. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this video until the very end and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.